Again, welcome to Washoe County Library's Wild Wednesdays. And we have our friends here from Conservation Ambassadors and um, they're featuring wilding today. And this is Gabe, what do you have there? We'll just start over for those of you okay, that- Okay, terrific. Before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, his name is Smog and Smog is a Gila monster. This is the Gila monster. Some people call him the beaded lizard too because of that beautiful skin. Isn't that amazing? Now this guy, he wanders, he wanders our Arizona deserts. These guys live way where it's super, super hot, a place where we couldn't survive, or a place where in the summer it's baking hot, in the winter it sometimes freezes, and he's able to live there. And has a couple of things that help him. First, he doesn't need to eat or drink very much at all. This guy can eat maybe once or twice a year and survive. That's pretty impressive. And what he does is when he eats, he stores the fat right there in his tail. Look how wide that tail is. That's where his, his fat, fat storage right there. And he lives off of that when the times get really lean. Now, a lot of people know, a lot, I bet a lot of people that are uh, watching this, the library program, so they're obviously smart people. <laughs> but this is a venomous lizard. This, he is venomous. So when he bites something, he bites down, he, his saliva, his spit is venom and it kills the prey and it also kind of starts to pre-digest, kind of breaks it down a little bit. And it, it doesn't have big, long teeth like a, like a rattlesnake. It doesn't have hypodermic needle-like teeth. He has very sharp, short teeth, but the, his whole mouth is filled with that, that modified saliva, that, that venom. And so when he bites down, he kind of chews from side to side and that helps him capture his prey. He uses his tongue just like a snake, sticks that tongue out, grabs little pieces of air, brings the air back to the roof of his mouth, and he can process it and tell what's happening in his world. He's very slow, not a very fast moving lizard at all, but he can catch mice and kangaroo rats. And he does this by going down into their burrows, into their tunnels, and he kind of traps them in there. That way he can make a meal out of them. I think he's fantastic. I was, before we got cut off, I was telling you his story. This guy was crossing the road down in Arizona, um, where, they're, where they're found. And the people that were lucky enough to see him, they stopped the car, they scooped him up, and they took him home to Los Angeles. And they kept him for about 10 years. And at, after about 10 years, they got caught. This is a threatened species. and shouldn't be made in the pet, should be out, out there in the wild. And this guy was taken by California Department of Fish and Wildlife and sent to us. Fascinating, fascinating creature. Um, the, there's another venomous lizard called the Mexican beaded lizard. Very similar to this, only different colors. I think that his colors are cool for 4th of July. Looks a little, a little bit like fireworks, doesn't he? Almost orange. Like, the pattern is amazing. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I wish you could feel it. The, the skin is just, it, it, it's, almost, it's almost like one of the Native American beaded purses yeah or like that it's just really fascinating stuff look at his claws claws are for digging going down into the burrows they get down they get about a foot underneath the ground the temperature in the desert stays a little bit more consistent it doesn't get all that hot it doesn't get all that cool and you're able to survive i wonder if the pattern inspires a lot of art yeah you know, I, a lot of that maybe. the art that comes from his region it looks very similar to that, doesn't it? It, it really does, very, yeah. That's interesting. That's life imitating art right there. It really is. Yeah, that's a, or vice versa, I guess. With the, the, um, look at those claws. He has one really big long claw on this side. Wow. For me. Now, other than the mice and the rats, you know what his favorite food is? <laughs> eggs. eggs. Eggs? He loves eggs. And he'll take a whole egg inside of his mouth and then he'll take his head and he'll kind of hit it against the ground and it crushes the eggshell and then he swallows it down. It's pretty neat. It's not the way I have my eggs in the morning, but it works, it works for the heel monster. Minus shells, please. <laughs> Minus <the> shells. <laughs> so Gabe, would he have gotten bigger had he not been in um, captivity? No, he's actually a very good sized um, heel monster. This is actually um, maybe, maybe a little bit larger, but that's about it. Um, the people surprisingly were taking actually fairly good care of him. They were, he was it's just that they weren't supposed to do this. They're threatened in the wild, and they're threatened in the wild mostly due to a lot, 
loss of their habitat, the place that they call home, and also the, the separating of it, meaning putting in roads. By putting in roads, these guys have a hard time getting across the road. He's, he's not fast. I don't know if he can kind of walk for a little bit. He's roop, roop, moving along. Roop. That's, that's about it. It's that oh. fat tail holding him back. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, the, the, it, it is a little bit of weight back there. And um, so, you know, by building those roads and also with ATVs and whatnot, I, a lot of people are interested in the Gila monsters, um, but not a lot of people are, are um, studying them, which is really, I, I like to tell kids if they're interested in a career with um, studying wildlife biology, maybe this would be an animal that they could maybe focus on because they're, not much is known about these creatures. There's questions about how they reproduce. There's questions about how they survive those long periods without food and water. And also what the questions about, you know, things that man is doing that affect their life cycle. He's pretty cool. He's very cool. We have a couple of questions coming in. Do you mind? Sure. What kind of eggs does he like? Quail are his favorite. Mm. And that would be in his natural habitat, I presume. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then do people- he needs, to, he needs to get the eggs of something that nests on the ground because he's not a tree climber. So he would have to get the eggs of something that's, that is nesting on the ground. He's so cool. So the other question is, do people kill them for their skin like with a lot of other reptiles? Oh yeah, you know what? A lot of reptiles around the world are affected by that. I have never seen anything made out of the skin of a Gila monster or a repeated lizard. So. Um, I think that maybe that's not affecting them that much. So I, I think that uh, maybe they're um, people not understanding them, people not wanting them around, and knowing that they're venomous. That might be problematic, but I don't think the skin trade is really part of the problem. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have another question. Is the animal species endangered? No, but they are threatened. So they are threatened, they're on the edge, they're on the edge of endangerment. So we, it, we have to do things now to help protect them, to take care of them. And Gabe, I like you empowering our future scientists. This would be a good study. Cool. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. And where can we learn more information about the Gila monster? I would go to the library, <laughs> I think that's a good choice. Excellent that's good. choice. Either the library or the Gila River in Arizona. And um, I think the library is closer. I think the library's closer. And and yeah. if you, if if our libraries currently are closed in your neighborhood, don't forget that we are online. We do have 24-7 um, availability through our website at washoecountylibrary.us. There's another question. Are the babies venomous? Yes. Mm -hmm. So born with venom. Yes, hatched. Or hatched, pardon me, right. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Our families would have known that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are we ready to go for our key Absolutely. event here? Or? Okay. All right, let's say goodbye to Smog. Today, the week of July 4th, right? It's Independence Week and we're getting close to the July 4th weekend. I was going to bring a very special July 4th animal, but she was unable to attend. So I have a different animal that has nothing to do with July 4th, but it's fascinating and cute, and I don't think anybody is gonna know what he is. Should I go get him? Yes, please. All right, his name is Nike, and he's, you know, let me give you a couple of clues. One, he's from the rainforest in South America. Clue number two, he's a cousin of the raccoon, he's related to the raccoon. And clue number three, um, he's not a monkey. Remember that he's not a monkey, even though he looks cute like that. Let me go back in again. This is Nike. No. Nike, come on out and meet Reno. Yes. Oh, we've got some guesses coming in, Gabe. Oh! oh! What is this? Oh. Any ideas? So we have a guess. Well, before you brought him out, Red Panda was one of the guesses based on your Great guess. The right oh, family. That's wow. a Procyon. It's the same family. That's really okay. cool. But he's not a Red Panda. Do we want to see if there's any other guesses coming in now that we have a visual? The Red Panda is like as close as you can get without being right. 
So that's pretty good. The lemur, there's, there's a... Lemur's a good guess too. He looks like some of the lemurs, but he's not in the lemur family. He's not a primate. Oh, there, let's get down the spot. Ah, right. here's a good one, possum. Oh, there's a sugar tail possum from Australia that looks like this, but he's not a possum. A possum is a marsupial, a pouch mammal. This guy's not a pouch mammal, but that's a really good guess. That is, a, and I think that's what I was thinking of when we were talking earlier, because he's got the same mm -hmm. big eyes. Should I tell you what he is? Yes, please. This is a kinkajou. This is a kinkajou. It sounds like you're sneezing when you say it. Kinkajou. Bless you. This is a, <laughs> thank you. You had to throw the German in there. That's good. <laughs> this, this is, this is a kinkajou. And, and uh, they, they're amazing. They're nocturnal, a nighttime animal. You can look at his eyes and his ears. And you can tell that he'd be awake at night. He looks, looks rather bat-like, doesn't he? It's like, like some of the fruit bats. And he climbs through the branches in the rainforest in South America, all the way up into the Yucatan in Southern Mexico. He climbs through the rainforest branches oh. and he finds, what is he yawn? He That's yawned. Cool. You guys see his tongue? That was awesome. Yeah, we'll talk about his tongue in a minute. You, you're going a little bit past, okay? Slow down there, right? Now, the, this guy, he, he goes along and he finds his favorite food, which are fruits and, and soft fruits and flowers. Now, the fruits he eats. You want to see him eat? Let him eat here a little bit. Watch this. I just happen to have an example of soft fruit right here. He eats clinging to the tree branches up in the trees. Check this out. Look at that. He swallows upside down. He swallows hanging up. I think that'd be rather hard to accomplish. I think all the kids in the Washout area, county area, should all be hanging upside down trying to eat no, those things. He <laughs> eats he eat a banana. No, he Gage likes fruits. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he likes the soft fruits and the flowers. Now the flowers, he does something very special. And he kind of showed you just a second ago. He goes and he sticks his nose down to the flowers and inside of his mouth, his tongue can extend out about four inches. And he sticks his tongue into the flower and he drinks the nectar. He loves to drink the nectar. Wow. And with that long tongue, you can reach in there, you can drink the nectar, you pull it back into his mouth. Now, while he's doing that, while, while he's filling up his belly with nectar, he's also doing a very, very important job. He's cross-pollinating those flowers. He gets a palm powder stuck to his fur. He takes it from one flower to the next. He cross-pollinates the nighttime flowers. He's, he's one of the pollinators of the rainforest. There are, some, there are some fruit bats that do this. There's some butterflies that do it during, during the daytime hours. He's one of the nocturnal um, cross-pollinators. And I guess that's important because there are some flowers that only open up at night. And without the nocturnal cross-pollinators, they, they would not be healthy. Kind of cool. Now, he's, he's able to stand up with this. Looks a little bit like Yoda from Star Wars, was he? He does. Now, he's, he, is a raccoon. He might not look like a raccoon if you're looking at him like this. You never see a raccoon sit up like that. But if you took an x-ray of his skeletal system, if you look just at his bones, he would look identical to the raccoons. The procyonids, their family, the raccoons and the red pandas we talked about, somebody asked, and the kinkajou and the creature called the quadamundi, those are all the, the procyonids, this that family. They have these wrists. Is that an earthquake? We do, they have a <laughs> wrist that, that rotate all the way around. They can go all the way around like this. So cool. So they can go up a tree head first, they can turn their wrist, and they can come down a tree head first as well. Pretty neat. Now, under his chin right here, he has, um, let me show him. He has an oil spot right there. This is a scent gland. And when he gets excited, this little yellow oil kind of oozes out. We can't really smell it but he'll spend a lot of time rubbing that neck on branches and he leaves this yellow, little yellow oil behind and he marks his territory. Pretty neat. Now, I don't know, Beata, did you see how I picked him up? I did. With the, with the tail? Yeah. I, I, I always like to tell you, please don't ever, ever, ever grab other animals by their tails because they'll get badly hurt. His tail is different. His tail is prehensile. Look at that, see how it grabs on? Hey, Gabe, he actually, to, oh, okay. We lost video for a second. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. We're, we're back now. This we're is back. Part. We can't lose it was video. quick. Yeah, yes. I didn't want you to go forward without, you know, us Thank doing. <laughs> yeah, this, look at that, pro, that, that prehensile tail, the grasping tail. He can grab on. We shouldn't name him Velcro. <laughs> Once he's attached, 
You can't get rid of him. Isn't that beautiful? Now, tell you his story. I always like to tell the stories, and his his is not a happy story, unfortunately. This guy this guy was found in a parrot cage in San Francisco. Somebody thought they should take a creature from the rainforest that lives in the canopy of the rainforest and keep him in a parrot cage in their kitchen. Obviously, it's not where he belongs. He belongs living, climbing from tree to tree, cross pollinating flowers, arguing with other kinkajou and other creatures. That's where he truly belongs. He doesn't belong to living in in, in somebody's home. He's now in his 20s. He's um, about 24 years old, I think now. Um, he's, which is, which is quite elderly for a king to do. He ages he, beautifully. Yes, he's looking pretty good. He's, he's kept his hair. Um, <laughs> did you see that? He's going to eat that entire banana. He will keep going. He loves bananas. So just, he probably eat two or three of these bananas um, at, at one sitting. Now, their diet is not just the, the nectar and the soft fruits. They'll also prey upon small creatures like slugs and snails and maybe a lizard if they can catch a lizard. Um, being raccoons, they're, they're omnivorous. They eat both plant material and, and uh, meat. They eat animal protein and they eat meat. I like to say they eat anything and everything. Beetles, grubs, worms, fruits, flowers, dead up eggs, just about anything in order to survive. Fascinating creature. Huh. You know that the, because they drink the nectar from the tree, and they're also, they, they sometimes will go and they'll, they'll get honey out of a beehive. Um, they're sometimes called honey bear. And there are some people that say, who's, he, who's the author that wrote Winnie the Pooh? You have to do you remember? <laughs> That's, uh, no, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the, apparently they, they thought that the author of Winnie the Pooh was actually using uh, a kinkajou as the model for Winnie before it became a, uh, uh, a black bear, before it became a real bear. They thought of it as actually the kinkajou as, as the honey bear. It's pretty neat. Now, the, um, wait, hold on there, I'll get you some more banana. He gets mad if I run out of banana. So I can't do that. You don't want a cranky <laughs> kinkajou. So the author no. of Winnie yeah. the Pooh is A.A. A. Milne, M-I-L-N-E. There we go. And that, that and initially was thought to be a, a kinkajou rather than a regular bear for, the, for Winnie the Pooh. Now, I said he goes after bees, beehives. This, this bird plays a major role. And I like to talk in, the, in my school friends and talk about this thick, thick, thick fur. And why do animals have thick fur? And most of the time it's to stay warm, to keep their bodies warm in cold climate. Where he's from, it's never cold. It's always steamy, steamy hot. This guy has thick fur to protect him from the bug world, to protect him from the insects, and to protect him from the, um, from the bees when he raids the bees, the beehive going after their honey. Can you believe how much he's eating? If he, he might look slow, but he's not slow. He's actually very, very quick. This guy is an, he's an amazing climber. When he gets up and goes, he just he boogies. Yep. He's getting on in years, you know. We slow down as we get older. <laughs> uh, We've got a couple of questions. Do you want to sure. get ready for those? Mm -hmm. So can you review again, is he the only mammal that cross-pollinates? You mentioned bugs and insects. No, no there's, there's, there's actually lots of mammals. Anything that eats flowers, but um, bats, are, I'd say we're are right up there with them, the fruit bats. Mm -hmm. And that's a good reminder. I forget that bats are mammals. So if you, if you want more information about bats, you guys know where to go. WashoeCountyLibrary.us. Nice. going to climb up in my shirt. I think one of our questions last week was if you were going to feature a bat. And um, I think yeah. you, you don't have yeah, one we, on hand right now. Not right now. No, we actually found a home for the six Egyptian fruit bats. That was beautiful. But they, they went to a bat conservancy. So they went to a really good place. So then this guy here, let me maybe I can show how his, his wrists work. I don't know if let me. But they, they rotate all the way. Look at that. Oh, no, nope. now he's squealing. Did you hear that sound? That little noise, that means I don't like that. So I want more banana. <laughs> I want more banana. I think he might be ready to poop now. Oh, this, we, there's we a pattern here, Gabe. <laughs> What's that? We've had a pattern here. <laughs> I know, exactly. It's like, exactly. But, you know, the virtual shows are great, except for all the poop. That's a, yeah, that's, yeah. Well, now we know what to call them the next series. 
<laughs> so if anybody, uh, the, the family of animals, I think that his family, the Procyonids, I think are the animals that have um, the coolest names. They really are. There's raccoon, that's a very interesting name. Quatamundi, that's the, the raccoon cousin. The, the kinkajou, the cackle missile that lives in Nevada. There's an animal called the oh, cackle missile. It's in the same, heard of that. the same, yeah, it's sometimes called the miner's cat, and it lives up there. The, the, the cackle missile, the kinkajou, the quatamundi, and, and, and the red panda, all members of the Procyonidae. Uh, those that, are fun uh, names to say. I, I like they are. those. Yeah. They're really impressive at, at dinner parties. <laughs> well, you know. The, <laughs> so. Does that help with funding? <laughs> yeah. The, not really. Not really. So, so, and I talked um, about, talk about his sun clan underneath his chin. It's, it's a neat process when you see it happening because you can actually see the oil kind of ooze. It's, and I'm a little bit allergic to it. It actually makes me a little bit itchy. So, come buddy. So Gabe, we've got some comments on Facebook coming in. He's adorable. Yes, he is. And then when he stands like that, he looks like a meerkat. He does. He does yeah. stand up like a meerkat. That's really good. Um, that's, a, that's actually very interesting. That's and then how strong is his tail? Incredibly strong. He can hold his entire body weight. And sometimes when he wraps it around me, I can't, I can't peel him off me. He wraps around and it's, it's that strong. Look at it. It's very thick. And it's, it's grasping all the way to the very end. Yeah, but all the way to all the very tip. And that was a good, good reminder to all of us not to touch animals by their tail because this guy's tail is unique. It is unique. That's the thing. You know, the tail is actually part of the spine. It's part of the backbone. So like on your dogs, your cat's tail, it's a very sensitive area. You got to be really careful with that. His tail, while it is still part of his backbone, it's surrounded by muscle, just incredibly strong muscle. So you can grab on and hang his whole body weight from that tail. It's, it's like a fifth arm. Did you tell us how heavy he gets? How big he gets? This, he's actually about a medium-sized male kinkajou. So, and he weighs right now about eight pounds. So, and he's starting to whistle. Can you guys hear that whistle? He's making a little sound. That means he's ready to go. He's done. And we have just a couple more questions. Sure. Um, are they always brown? They range from a blonde color to this darker brown. And actually, there's a kinkajou that's called the Olingo. You might want to look it up if you go look at these guys up at the library. The Olingo is a type of kinkajou that is almost, almost the color of this banana. A lot lighter. Oh. Where do they cool. hide? Yeah, in banana <laughs> trees. No, oh, that's there. <laughs> well, there's that. And then um, a, a couple of our folks are joining us now, and they wanted to know his name, and I think it was Nike. It's Nike, and he got the name apparently because his tail will sometimes make him swoosh, like on the Nike tennis shoe. That's right where you got the name. So I don't think it was a mythical god of war reference. I think it had to do with the shape of the tail. So, so Gabe, you are welcome to wind down here. I just have a couple of more housekeeping things to review with our families, but do you have anything else you want to share? No, just it's really important that he, we all know he's super cute, right? He's super cute, but he belongs in the rainforest. He belongs living his life free, right? And so everybody, when they see cute animals, say, oh, I want to have, oh, I'd like to see him. I wish he had lived his life out there. So that's little Nike. Say goodbye, Nike. And what's coming up, Gabe? Oh, next week, I think we're going to Australia. We're going down under. That sounds good to me. Do, do you want to, and it's with an animal that has the coolest sound at our center. It's an amazing song, and everybody's going to learn how to do it next week. So. And I think there is actually a children's song that goes with that. We'll make there sure to pick that I don't, I don't sing Beyonce. I'm not going to sing. Oh, come on, Gabe. It's, unless it's like Johnny Cash. I can't do it. So. Oh, <laughs> we love Johnny Cash here, too. But, you know, I'm going to put you and So next week, we're going to have um, Morgan from the South Valley's Library hosting with you. I could be really cruel and put you guys on the spot and... and uh, Morgan and I have joked many years about our singing ability. So Morgan, you're gonna have to get on screen and sing the Oh, 
<laughs> an animal from down under. I hope no one really heard what I just said. That was terrible. I oh. just gave away a big, a big clue. <laughs> I think I'm off my game. <laughs> Okay, on that note, we're going to end, and Gabe, we'll see you next week. Wonderful. Thanks for, thanks for all you do. Have a happy 4th of July, everybody. You too. Okay. Bye.